on my way back from the meadows, I was thinking that it wasn't a fantastic day because the other two horses weren't good, but I don't know whether my dad, I'm sure my mom and dad are sitting home, you know, beside, them, beside themselves because Irish Ray didn't look good. I've spoke to my parents about Irish Ray, and I've spoke to everybody about horses like Irish Ray. When you do really good at two and three, it means nothing because you only have to race against, like, Irish Ray, it's unfair to him. He left the Maritimes, raced once at Mohawk, followed along at 57, come over to Northfield. He missed some time. You know, we got him back going. His qualifier was adequate. Looked pretty good. He won his qualifier in 59. You know, these horses, a lot of the horses you see in these lower classes, at some point have raced in the open, in the backup class. They're what you might call the gatekeepers, right? They're tough. And it's not easy. It's a tough transition. I, I beat this drum a million times. The transition from three to four. You know, Carter Michael Dio looked great today. Now, where's the six company? Somebody said, oh, he's an open trotter. He's a this, he's a that. There's a lot that makes up an open trotter. And less of it is speed than you may think. And that's a tough, a tough thing for people to digest and a tough thing for people to completely understand. And when it comes to the earlier race of Carter Michael Deal, just a tremendous mile. But again, racing against those three but six, that non-winners of not more than six wins class. You know, now he's racing up in the non-winners of 10. And, you know, as I said in another video, that's a gateway to the, to the open, to the preferred in many places. The reason I bring it up is because obviously his mile today did not go unnoticed some uh, stir and there was some people I called looking to buy Carter Michael Dio and um, my answer to them was I would bring it to my partners on Carter Michael Dio and my message to my partners is we are not going to continue to go down this road of passing up selling three year olds turning four or freshly minted four year olds on the basis that they could be they would be they should be they're going to be open horses right now, Renegade Gypsy's found a nice little spot for himself at, um, and I keep using him because he would be the poster child for what we're trying to talk about. A talented three-year-old that finished off his year strong, Resolute Bay, another one, finished off his year strong, and then came out as a four-year-old. Now, a little, both of them had a little more experience than Carter. Carter missed some time because he had a line and then that Cessna went behind that healed perfectly. But, um, understanding how difficult it is. It's hard to quantify that. It's hard to explain that to my partner sometimes. We kept Renegade Gypsy over, which I think in hindsight was a massive glaring mistake. He's turned into a decent horse, a four-year-old. He's found that five-year-old. He's found, uh, he's found uh, a nice spot in that open. Now, it's not his fault the other day. The first over grind, that's not Renegade Gypsy. He can't come first over with him. And, and that is not fair to categorize him as a horse by the way he raced the other day. He's an effective, useful horse, and he'll do well in that class. But struggled quite a bit as a four-year-old until late in the season. I think a lot of that might be attributed to allergies also, if I was to guess. And then the same thing with Resolute Bay. He finished off his three-year-old year strong, but didn't translate well into his four-year-old season. Raced well his last start, and we sold him. We ended up getting 40000 for him. But I want everybody to understand, don't confuse speed with where you can go with speed, right? You have to have the total package to make it to the open. It's just the reality of the situation. And I'm certainly not here saying that Carter doesn't, he does. He has to rearrange his toolbox a little bit, put everything in place. Somebody said, well, we should geld him and then just wait. We could do that, but we're likely not going to. I'm not going to continue down this road. This will not be the last Carter Michael Dio we've had. It was not the last Renegade Gypsy. It will not be the last Resolute Bay. We'll have lots of horses coming up through the ranks. Horses that we buy and procure or bring up from our from our ranks, our, our yearling sales, right? Because that is where we got Renegade Gypsy. It is where we got Carter. It is where we got Resolute Bay. We're not going to we're not going to cease to make good horses and they're not gonna to cease to come to our barn. So, uh, that being that, 
I want to talk about the racing itself. Carter Michael Dio, I thought, raced well. I didn't want to get in a spot with him today. You know, I, I thought we'd have a real problem from the rail. He was actually quite composed, got away well, but if you watch in the first turn, he's throwing his head, throwing his head, throwing his head. And I know what's about to happen. Dave Miller, Dave, uh, Dave Miller, Dave Pallone is going to clear to the front with the favorite. Second favorite's in the two hole, and I'm going to be first over into the two horses that the betting public believe I can't beat. Nope, not going to do it. I chose a little more aggressive approach. I was going to push the envelope a little bit. Got Carter out and moving. Took us all the way to three eighths and clear 56, and I just stomped on the accelerator down the back stretch. The wind's at my back. Um, and just kept them moving forward. He's a fast call. He showed it today. He was good today. So a big win from him, new lifetime mark, 53-2. and two. It certainly was far from cool today, but it was windy, and it was a good mile from him today. Now, we'll talk about the horse was a bit of an enigma. I warmed up uh, with the three-year-old, the international spy. Run all over the track, run all over the track. He was changing gear and changing gear and go with him. He didn't race good. Now, we had the hobbles tight, we had a little bit more weight on him. Um, I liked the way he was trotting in the mile. He just fizzled out. Not sure why. We scoped him after, so we cleared that first hurdle. No mucus, no blood, no nothing. Bittersweet, but good. Now we'll draw blood to see if maybe he tied over, tied up on the truck ride over. Or, uh, or there was something going on with his blood. And if that's not the case, well then, as I said to Tim, then we get to work. I don't think there's many changes to make. We're going to get the flip-flops off. He just felt like he could have been spinning his wheels a little bit, a little slipping a little bit. Combine that with tighter hobbles and a, a lot of weight up front and not that hard to tire a young horse out. But before we start talking mechanics, we need to get his blood back and make sure that he's okay. And if he is, great. Again, be a little bittersweet, but let's get to work. Now, I'm going away next week, but Tim knows it well. And we're on the same page. Take the flip flops off. Put the same shoes on that we have on Carter Michael Dio, which are what I categorize as pin bars. Those shoes with the bar right through the middle. Something call them flat bars. Or, I don't know, call them a million things. I was just I don't know why I call them pin bars. Um, now that I say it out loud for the millionth time, but no idea how I would get that name from what the shoe is. But anyway, we'll put those shoes on probably and. Um, if he needs to shed some weight, then we can. I think his uh, under very green horse, his understanding of racing is limited, obviously. It was his first lifetime start. And uh, we'll use that as a stepping stone. Set the bar pretty low after today. 2-4, I think. But what I felt was a horse that, to me, he did feel like he was slipping and he definitely was tired. Didn't come from mucus, didn't come from blood. Okay? Let's investigate a little bit more and then we'll get to that. He has talent. James said, you know, he felt pretty good to me when I schooled him. That was not the horse that I saw today. Was it the surface of the track? Was there something going on with him uh, in his blood? We'll get to the bottom of that. And if not, uh, the good news was that he trotted his mile good. So how do we duplicate that in a way that he's not tired? That he doesn't fizzle out? And that will be the job for next week. So that was International Spy. And then, of course, as I said, Irish Ray. In a tough spot, this guy too, he was flat today. He was hot in the qualifiers. Uh, why was he flat today? Well, not as easy to figure out why because he's not an easy horse to deal with. You can't scope him. He's going to flip over and wreck everything. He's just a rude colt, four-year-old. So we're going to have to rely on some blood work from him. If we absolutely had to scope him, we could. But let's go look at blood work because he was done at the head of the lane. I hope for his sake he wasn't done because he's not good enough to try at 56, but I don't think that's the case. He had talent. You know, he, winners win, and, and of course, there is a, a boiling point, a, a ceiling for every horse. But at the same token, when you look at a horse that won 19 of 20 races as a baby, you'd want to think that he can expand a little bit. So a couple of horses to look a little deeper on today. One horse that looked fantastic today. And of course, Tech Song Soprano last night. Somebody said you forgot to mention Tech Song. That's how much is going on right now with me is that I missed one of the better horses that we're racing right now. Great job uh, by Megan and Scott again last night. Scotty put him in a nice soft spot. He kind of got doubled up in the last turn and then that sprint was on from there. He said, I could have just easily been fifth. 
I know, I saw it. I thought Thoris raced absolutely fantastic. I was thoroughly impressed with him. Had been since we got him. Um, had been since we got him, and I think there's a... But there's also a barometer when we're talking about the worth of horses. We They sold him at the right time, right after the stakes, heading into the winter season. We paid $73,000 for a tech song. He made four hundred and took America 51. So, um, important to keep your eye on the ball and understand, you know, the worth uh, of horses. And most importantly, this time of year, and I can't stress this enough, availabilities and opportunities, right? In Ontario, we've gone through this. The Meadows, I don't know the last time the open trot, maybe it's filled a little bit, but uh, not as much. Even the open trot the other night was a little water down in Northfield. You saw Stay Close end up in there. It's a little tougher at Miami Valley, right? But we have two horses down there right now. So availability is a place to race them. But when we're talking again, quietly circling back to Carter, we're talking about Carter. He's a little tricky to drive also. This isn't a push button horse. He's not Texan Soprano, who is a push button horse. So I think all of these things need to be taken into account. So um, that is what's ongoing. That's what took place today. That's what's ongoing today. Uh, interested to watch, ready for landing race tonight. James has been lobbying for him to be castrated, and it may, in fact, be a successful lobby. I do want to give him a few weeks off, and it may be the right time to do it. We'll be castrated now. So uh, that's what's also going on with Ready for Landing. Tomorrow we got a number of horses racing, uh, ones that I can pick up. Maybe that's all of them is uh, stay special in Mohawk. And then we have Patrick the Piranha and uh, No Free Lunch in Pennsylvania. Uh, to my partners, I apologize. I couldn't drive them tomorrow. We're going to train in the morning, then go back right back immediately to Ontario. Uh, I'm going to train the horses on Saturday there, and Oliver has baseball practice on Friday night. So I opted to take off uh, Friday at the Meadows. Patrick's been racing great. Ridge Warren's a great driver, and he's going to get along with him well. And then, of course, he qualified no free lunch. So as I said to him, um, just protect him, right? The source is coming back from an injury. Keep that in mind when you're driving them. So that's the plan for tomorrow. That's what's going on. But super excited to go with the babies tomorrow morning. And then again, get a great look at the horses in Ontario Saturday morning. So with that, I'll let you go. I hope you guys had a wonderful day. It was a decent day. You can't complain about International Spy or Irish Ray. They just weren't good enough today, right? For whatever reason. We'll get to the bottom of that. But when you're racing horses that are, you know, five to one, six to one in the program, I know that both those horses ended up uh, under ten dollars on the board, but um, the reality was they just weren't ready uh, for that, I guess. And, and that we'll see if a component of that is found in their blood of why. Uh, but for right now, we got some work to do on those two. So with that, I'm going to let you guys go. I hope you guys had a wonderful day. I will talk to you all very soon. Stay tuned. Tune in, I guess is what I meant to say. Tune in tomorrow, 8.15 a.m. We're going on the track with the babies in Ohio. It should be a lot of fun. Oh, and one more thing. Somebody asked me, Anthony, why is there a set that says jogging? There's two horses in that set that are coming back from getting uh, in minor injuries. Eve St. Kemp was one of them. Um, Baby Zet was sick and was just getting back going, so we wanted to put her in a little lighter atmosphere, put her in that set. Grand old chap who was never trained and is just up to jogging speed on the trot. He's in that set. And uh, two horses we want to back off with. Oh, he'll know. I noticed when he blistered her knees, both her and I'm a trucker, their knees blew up quite a bit and then were slower to come back down, carrying heat in their knees and heat in their feet. Listen, uh, I say this all the time and I've said it forever. You guys have heard me say it. When the horses are talking, you want to listen. And those two particular horses are saying just to go easy for a little bit. So we're going to back off a trucker and oh, he'll know. You're going to get to see everybody jogging, though, especially Chappie jogging tomorrow on that set. Seven training sets going theoretically postward. It all starts at 8.15.